nestled in the East Nook of Fife, Dunbarney Golf Links. Construction is well underway and we've come down to take a look for ourselves. This could be one of Scotland's next greatest golf links. Ira, we are so excited to be here today to get a sneak peek at Dunbarney Golf Links and from what I can see already, it looks magnificent. What was here before and how has this project come to life? Well, it was just farmland before, basically cows and sheep roaming about, 345 acres of pure lynx land. And who's behind the project? It's Clive Clark is, is the designer slash owner. And you only cut into the, well, the first cut of turf was a year and a half ago? Well, yeah, the, the, the kind of big machines, dozers and so on, they went in, would have been April last year, 2018, the first shovels went in the ground and then first seed only hit the ground on August the 5th and then 12 days later I cut it. That's absolutely incredible. Really that is remarkable because now you've got all 18 holes yeah. actually in play. You were telling me that the, the grass is getting cut every second day. Opening next year? Opening yeah 16th of May uh, 2020. Seven o'clock tea times booked. <laughs> I'm going to try and sneak in a tea time. Maybe it's 6:45. And what's the style of the course? Because obviously Lynx turf that we're standing on. But what can we expect to see out there? I think well, once the course is uh, open, it's going to be just a, a traditional Lynx golf course. It should be playing nice and firm surfaces. Yeah, nice and hard. As long as we can keep keep the roughs nice and wispy. I think it'll be a very, very playable golf course. Cool. Well, I'm desperate to go and take a look, so should we head out? Let's do it. So, Ira, lots of people try to build golf courses all over the world, but very few actually accomplish it. What, what's the trick? I don't really know what the trick is as such. Uh, it's basically just doing everything you, you write as such. So you need to jump through all the hoops again, planning permission, keeping everybody happy as such. How much does the quality of the ground that you find on the site affect the success? Because it was all pure sand as such, you can basically do whatever you want. Okay. Uh, where if, it's, if it was clay based or something, then you need to always think you've got to cap it with something to make it playable as such. Uh -huh. So drainage wise, for instance, we don't have any drainage issues because it's all pure sand. Even though we did put in drainage just as a precaution or kind of future proof, proof the course is up. And in terms of the challenge that the course has in store, what can visitors expect to find? I think if you find it on a day like today where there's no wind, I think it'll be a very pleasing course. I think, well, even on a windy day, it's because we've got very generous fairways as such. Um, as long as we as the greenkeeping staff can keep the the deep roughs under control, uh -huh. I don't think it'll be a problem. I think it's basically once you go over the, over the dunes where it could be interesting if you kind of spray it a bit too much. <laughs> How many people have been involved in terms of green staff to bring this project to life? We're 12 people at the moment. We're going up to 13 uh, by the end of next 12. October, I think. Well, that's a really small team. That doesn't sound like many people at all. It is, because everybody's wanting it to be a, a success. Yeah, of course. And then just look, I'm just watching the way this burn is cutting into this fairway. How much of the natural contours have you been able to use? Or have you had to really adapt a lot of the site? No, that was uh, over 600,000 cubes of uh, material was shifted in 12 weeks. These, so we've got these naturalized bunkers, as you can see, we're just driving past. So we've got a combination of them and the, the reverted eco bunkers. Eco bunkers. Yeah, so they're uh, artificial turf, basically. The faces, instead of stacking sword on top of each other, or turf. What about inspiration in terms of the course layout? Is, is there any um, other golf courses that this has been loosely modelled on? I think there is a few holes, yeah, that kind of got similarities, but I kind of I think we'll keep that as as a surprise as such for people to find out themselves. Okay. Kind of think what they think, what it uh, yeah. resembles. Oh, it's lovely turf, really, really nice. But the greens, obviously, you've got to protect them in these yeah. early days. Basically, yeah, we'll kind of shave them down slow. Well, bring, bring the height down slowly just to get the speeds up and then roll them, roll, roll and cut them probably most days, I think, when we're open as such, just to kind of encourage the speed. Sand is such an important feature in a golf course. If it's too fluffy, yeah. it's completely useless. That is 
basically perfect sand. Glorious to play Beautiful. out. Music to my ears. <laughs> it's really beautiful. I'm a big fan. I read a quote from the course designer Clive Clark saying that everyone loves a short par four because it gives the higher handicappers a chance of making a nice par, yeah. the mid-range a chance of making a birdie and then a possibility of an eagle for those lower handicappers. This looks like one of those from this tee. He's got a good few holes like this, which is drivable. I think it's between four and six holes, depending on which the, which way the winds are going, it, that's drivable, yeah. Yeah, and of course, the layout of the tees. What's the design here? Because we're seeing men's, yeah. women's tees being almost abolished and just yeah. different a variety of tees that people can use. So I think there's between four and six tee pads on each hole. I think the pair of threes basically only have four tee pads. So that gives you a good variation as such, yeah. From the front tee, I think it can go from 5,300 or 5,100 to back to the championship tees is, can go almost to, I want to say 7.7, 7, but I think they officially say 7.6. So do you think there is a championship that they'd like maybe in, in mind for the future? Oh, we'd love a, a big uh, championship of some description or tournament, but yeah, that'll, I think that'll just come with time as the course matures and uh, yeah, I mean, give it 10, 20 years time, I think it'll be the best golf course in the world, in my opinion. There you go, best golf course in the world. It's not a small statement. Here we are standing on the eighth tee, another magnificent view. I love the way you can see so many little glimpses of the other holes yeah. wherever you are. But you were telling me this is one of the signature it's holes. Definitely, yeah. 158 yards from the back tees. The tees we're standing on here is about 140 yards. Okay. I think it's just over 100 from on the front tee there. Really good looking old, tiny little green. So we're surrounded by deep bunkers. So yeah. you gotta get your uh, <laughs> your <laughs> angle right. Yeah. Four, yeah, four quite sizable bunkers there. Yeah. Big faces on them and a bit of a runoff down to the right. Yeah. I've got to have a crack at it. I it's think inviting. so. It'd be rude not to. It would be rude not to. So Ira, I feel really lucky that I'm actually getting to hit a few shots on this ground here. Have many others had a chance to play the course yet? Only a select few, I would say, we've allowed on on the hallowed ground, I would say. But, uh -huh. Yeah, there's a steady steady amount of golf going through at this stage, just the yeah, investors and so on. What about yourself? Have you had we've, a... We've, the greenkeeping staff, we've played it a couple of times, and yeah, we've, uh, we're liking what we're seeing, as, uh, anyway. Yeah, great shot. Outside chance of a birdie, maybe. Beautiful. <laughs> So Ira, the question on everyone's lips is going to be how they can come and get a round of golf here. Well, let's just go on to the Dunbarney Links golf site and, and book a tea time. Okay. It's uh, opening up on the 16th of May 2020, so yeah, the, the more the merrier. And is there a membership structure? Can you become a member here? There's going to be no members, no, it's strictly pay and play. Will the course be open all year round? Uh, as far as I believe, it's going to be shut probably three or four months during the winter time. That's kind of part of the planning permission. Ah, right, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And look at this view. I mean, what? This is just spoilt for choice. On a clear day, you can actually see something All the way across there, yeah. to, the, to the golfing ten, land over there. Ten mile as far as I believe to, to the other side. So I'm just going to have a little try of the greens here, which obviously the grass is a little bit longer at the moment to protect them, I imagine. Yeah, we're just trying to yeah, uh, kind of ease them in gently, but they're rolling pretty good at this stage. We have 20% bent and 80% fescue on the greens. How much footfall do you reckon this course will have? I mean, how many rounds a day do you expect to host here? I'm not too sure what the, I would imagine long term in the future, we'll probably be heading for 25,000 rounds, I would, I, would, I would think. And I guess you get so many Americans coming into this part of the world. I mean, this is golfing ground at its very best around this neck of the woods. Of course, he's low there and you've got yeah. that strip as well, but you're never going to be short of golfers looking for a round of golf. Definitely not, no. And I think it's just, it'll definitely help the, the area as well. I mean, we're surrounded by, by leaving London Lynx, Ely's just there, as you said, and yeah, Mirrorfield over the water here. Ira, it's been brilliant to see this place today. I think there's no doubt about it. You've got something exceptionally special here. So thanks for showing us around. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Very good.